So this is actually a pretty cool picture. I like what is done photographically. So let's work on this one and see what we would do. Now, one of the things that you can do, and this is something that I've used for many, many years in kind of guiding me in making decisions about editing is to ask yourself the question, looking at the photo, just asking yourself the question, what do I wish were different? Like looking at this, and this was, I think, a raw photo because it looks kind of flat, and that's generally how you know it's a raw photo. What do I wish were different? Well, I wish the wood that the bird is sitting on was straight. There is some junk at the top that is there. There's also just, I guess the rest isn't bad, but the image just looks very, very flat. This should be fairly easy to fix. Let's press Command R. I'm going to open it up in Camera Raw, or we can just open it up in Lightroom too, right? Okay. So what would I do here uh, to fix it? Well, let's start off with straightening it. Let's go to the crop tool. Now there is an auto button and it works sometimes. It's not a hundred percent. Let's hit auto and see if it works. Yeah, see, I don't think it's, I still don't think it's straight. <laughs> nice. So I think straight would be more like, I'm looking at the front piece of that wood, more like that. Plus it just needs to be tighter on the bird, right? It's not about the background. And that actually gets rid of some of our problems. Though I probably wouldn't center the bird. I'd probably move this a little this way. So the bird's not right dead in the center. I'm not happy with my crop, as you can tell. All right. Now, as a starting place, I generally switch my profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Landscape. And you can see what just that did. Watch. See how it's like richer and more colorful? Yeah, that Adobe Color, the default one. I mean, when was the last time you thought the default was a great setting, right? You're like, so I usually normally switch mine, unless it's a portrait, I switch it to Adobe Landscape. It gives you better contrast and better color, just looks better. In fact, here, I'll put them side by side. Take a look. So on my screen, I can really see a difference. I'm looking on the studio screen here. It's not nearly as much, but either way. All right, then just as a starting place, hit the auto button to see what that does. It's better. It's, it's not killer, but it's certainly better than it was. You can hide that, just the change that we made by hitting auto, just by clicking on this eye icon. So you can see, yeah, it did better. What did it do? It kind of increased the, the whites and blacks and, and, and all that. Uh, one thing you can do to make sure your whites and blacks are set properly is hold the shift key, double click on the word whites, and then double click on the word blacks. That's... That's better. It might be actually a little dark in the blacks for my taste, but I think the whole thing needs just a little adjustment in and eh, the blacks are still a little, little too dark. Maybe add some contrast because it was flat looking. This stick over here has got to go. You might be able to get rid of this. And I say might by using this eraser tool here in Lightroom. It's better than what we had before, but it's still not great. Let's go see. Yeah, it worked there. This little thing sticking up is extremely distracting. Let's see if we can at least get rid of that. So I would have to jump over to Photoshop. All right, and we got to do better than that, right? Let's just try Content Aware Fill. Let's go here, hit uh, Content Aware Fill. You can just go and choose it this way. Uh, just by going under the Edit menu, choose Fill. And the default is Content Aware. It's already the default. Hit OK, see if that does a better job. Yeah, look at, look at how much better that is. Now, I don't know what's going on here. Is this part of the bird? Yeah, I don't know what that is. It's not, I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. Something's funky there, but I think we're going to have to let it go. And I think the last step I would do, I mean, if it were me, I would kind of want to get rid of this. this. I find this wildly distracting, but first, Let's see if this is wildly distracting. Let's go here, hit generative fill and hit generate. So you could choose this one, this one, this one. I think either the first or the third one, either one of those is good. I think I'll go with the first one. Now let's try the bold thing of the day. Can I get rid of this thing that's driving me nuts? This whole thing up here, I am not loving. It may be too big of an ask. Generative fill, and we'll hit generate. That's not bad. No, that's not bad at all. Let's look at the second variation. That's not bad. Third variation. 
I'm going with the second or third. I don't know. That's pretty good. All right, let's flatten the image. The last thing I would do is sharpen it to death. Now, I use a sharpening plugin. I'm going to tell you that right now. Go into the filter menu. I use either Topaz Lab, Sharpen AI, or I use On One No Noise. Someone's going to win this plugin you're about to see. Look at that. Look at the difference. Now, I don't have sharpening on, I use both. So my setting is to use no noise and then the sharpening. And let's go look at the difference. So, so it removes the noise and it sharpens at the same time. Let's see if you can see this up here. Look at the difference. Are you seeing that? Look at the difference. Noise, no noise. But you don't lose the sharpness like we used to use, and that's because of the AI sharpening that it adds at the end. There it is, done. Wow, that, that thing did a heck of a job. It's crazy. And there you go. And so that would be the final image. And there's the original.